Hey guys, welcome. My name's Troy. These are messages for the Crossing Fellowship Church. I'm glad that you're here. Haven't posted in a couple of weeks. Last week didn't get a video up. Sorry about that. Encountered some difficulties, and uh, but I'm back today. And I'm glad that you're here. We've been working through the Gospel of John, and uh, this Sunday we're actually looking at the beginning of John chapter 17. This awesome, awesome uh, passage of Scripture. You know, what, what's one of the nicest things that we do for one another as believers, those who are in the, the, those who are in the family of faith, um, especially when we know that we're struggling or, or we're facing circumstances that, that are, are frightening or hard, what, what do we tell one another? We say, I'm praying for you. And that's comforting to know that, um, that we are praying for one another. But in this passage of scripture, we're going to see that Jesus Christ is actually praying for his disciples and praying for those who would come to faith because of the faithful witness and testimony and ministry of his disciples. And we're not gonna get all the way through John chapter 17 today, but primarily uh, looking at those, those first five verses um, and so let me read to you from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And after he said this, he looked toward heaven and he prayed, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son. That your Son may be glorified in you. For you have granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had before the world began. Throughout the Gospel of John, up to this point, we've encountered this phrase again and again where Jesus says, my hour has not yet come. I, I'm not gonna go here, I'm not gonna do this because my hour has not yet come. And here we are, now we are at the, we are, we've come to this moment when Jesus acknowledges that his hour has come. And what that means is that he is soon going to the cross where he will die for the sins of the world, be buried and on the third day raise Again, you know, there's some key themes that I want to point out that we will learn. Uh, key, uh, key things we're going to learn as we study this high priestly prayer, it's called, of Jesus Christ. Here, here are a few of those. First is the perfect plan of salvation that God laid down before the foundations of the earth were laid. And he is perfectly executing his plan, carrying out his plan, if you will. So the divine plan, and in that plan, we encounter the complete and total righteousness of God and his perfect love. And we can see that love in this interchange between Jesus and the Father as he prays for the disciples. We also encounter and are reminded of the divine authority and power of Jesus Christ. He is the highest name, the name above all names, and he is the only one who can save, who's been given the authority to save. <clears throat> and one, one last thought is our position in Christ. We are not of the world. We've been taken out of the world, conveyed out of the kingdom of darkness, and been transitioned into the kingdom of light. And we, as Christ's followers, have a heavenly purpose in this life. A purpose so high and so important, it supersedes all other human endeavors. And I just want to break the, uh, these five verses down and just, and just touch them on them uh, briefly. That first verse there, after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. This is Jesus' high priestly prayer. 
and he is praying for his disciples. Now, once a year on Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies where he would sprinkle blood on the mercy seat and burn incense. He would sprinkle blood on the mercy seat for the forgiveness of sins uh, of the people and he would uh, offer that incense uh, there at the mercy seat before God. And to enter into that, that place, that Holy of Holies, he had to carefully prepare himself. Why? Because in the Holy of Holies is where God dwelt among his people. That is where God showed up. And God cannot look upon evil. And evil is destroyed in his presence. And so, once a year, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and pray. And offer sacrifice. And in this high priestly uh, prayer, um, Jesus is praying for his disciples, as I mentioned earlier, and he's praying for those who would be saved uh, because of their, their faithful testimony. The Holy of Holies was separated by this, by this thick drape uh, that, was, that was made of fine linen, that was purple and scarlet. Um, now, Jesus, in this passage that we're encountering, he, he is the Lamb of God, but he is also our high priest. He is interceding on behalf of his disciples. We know Romans 8, verse 34, Paul teaches us that Jesus, even right now, is at the, at the right hand of the Father, interceding, intervening for, pleading for, appealing for, on behalf of those whom have received him. Jesus is interceding for you if you are a child of God. Let that sink in. Jesus is interceding for you, appealing, pleading, intervening on your behalf. That is how precious you are to him. That is how greatly he esteems you and values you. <clears throat> Jesus glorified the Father. Scripture says that, in the Scripture that we read, it, it says that, or Jesus says, I should say, that I've glorified you by finishing the work you gave me to do. In other words, Jesus came and he faithfully did all that the Father wanted him to do. He did it completely and he did it perfectly. Jesus would also be glorified, lifted up, which is what glorified means, by his death on the cross. It's interesting that the cross is evidence of Jesus' divine authority. Troy, what do you mean? Well, Jesus is the name above all names. Names. Why don't you read Philippians 2, 9. We know from studying the Gospel of John that all things were made by him and through him, that he is the life and the light of men. In Romans chapter 10, we read over and over how Jesus is the only name that saves, the name above all names, the complete fulfillment of God's righteous demands. Jesus' divine authority is revealed in the power that he had to lay down his life and to take it up again. John 10, 18. The cross reveals Jesus' authority that he is the one and only Son of God. He is the only one worthy to do what he did on our behalf. Jesus did what only he could do to save us from the power of sin and death. What an ironic thing that the power and authority of Jesus is revealed through his sacrificial death on the cross and resurrection. This, this humble, sacrificial act 
redeems his authority. And, and I want to just say to believers that is this humility that should outline our lives and be reflected in our lives. You know, as believers, we often get caught up in, in uh, this, the temptation um, to follow certain Christian celebrities. And I don't care what name you want to throw out there, but it can also be a very divisive thing. Oh, I listen to this guy. I listen to that guy. This is, this is the person. No, this person has, that person's a heretic. This is a, look, here's the thing. <clears throat> beware falling into the fan club of Christian celebrities. They're going to stumble and fall at some point. Why? Because they're human. And power and authority and influence corrupts. So where should we focus our attention? We should focus our attention on Jesus Christ because he alone has the power and the authority he's the one we look to it's his words that we lean on it's okay to listen to, to, to sermons and and, um, and and find those resources on in books and and online to be encouraged in our faith but we have to remember to be very very careful and intent on focusing our heart and mind on Jesus Christ and on manifesting or lifting up the name of Jesus with our life. Not our own, but His. Jesus also had the, as we're going to see, He had the authority to commission or send out His disciples into the world. We encounter that in this high priestly prayer, and we also can read about it in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Let's talk a little bit about eternal life. Jesus said, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I am reminded of Romans 10, verses 9 through 11. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your mouth you believe, for with your heart you believe, excuse me, and are justified, and with your mouth you confess and are saved. It is just as the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Look, I'm just about out of time, but I want to encourage you that God loves you and he has a divine plan for your life. Have you received the gospel message concerning Jesus Christ? Have you confessed with your mouth what you believe in your heart concerning his death, burial, and resurrection? Because he alone has the power to save. His name alone will save. Not religion, not that famous guy you're listening to on YouTube, Jesus and Jesus alone. Have you received him, confessed him with your mouth? Jesus loves you. He is interceding for you. He, in this prayer, is committing himself to die so that we might be sanctified by the power of God, set aside for a holy purpose. Believer, are you glorifying the Father with your life? You can glorify him by living a sacrificial life. When you sacrifice, when you lay down the comfort of this life, you glorify the Father. You can humble, humble yourself and glorify God. And if you are a child of God, you can pick up that heavenly purpose that Jesus Christ gives to his disciples, and that is to spread and reveal or manifest the name of God in our generation, to share the message of his salvation. Look, be encouraged. Next week we're going to be reminded that we are not of this world, that we belong to Jesus. Know
that you are in his hand, believer.